Hey Solo Sportsters, in this video we are going to give you a full breakdown of when to restring your tennis racket. It is by far the most commonly asked question we get here in the shop, so stay tuned as we give you the complete run through. Now I know you're hoping for a quick short answer, but spoiler alert, the truth is it really depends on the player. So in order to figure out how that works, we really need to understand why we're restringing in the first place. And the reason is because strings are like food and that they're a perishable item that degrades over time. So the more you use it, the different temperature, humidity, court surface you play on, length of the rally, how much power and spin you place on the ball, how much power and spin your opponent places on the ball, all of these factors and all of these elements are breaking down the strings and essentially taking away the feel, the response, the forgivingness, the power, and the overall performance of that string and that racket. So that when you do restring it, you're reinstating it, reviving it, bringing it back to that perfect form so that you're playing your best. Now that we understand the downfalls of not restringing frequently, we have to determine as a player or with our equipment where it fits on that scale of how much wear and tear it's experienced. So the most obvious answer is when the string is broken, we know we've taken it to the limit and it requires to be restrung. But what if it hasn't popped yet? And what you can do is you can take the racket and move across on the string. Hopefully we're all hitting the ball in that sweet spot. And you're going to move something in the middle of the racket and you're going to look at that wear and tear. Now when the strings are being played with, they're going to glide against each other. They're going to notch into each other and they're going to wear in. So you can look at those actual notches on your racket and see how far along you are. If they're at 50%, that means the string's about to break when it's halfway through that string and severely notched. And if you see little minor notches, you know you have a lot of wear and tear left to go and that the strings are still pretty fresh. So definitely check out the notches in it, see how far along you are. If it is your only racket, you might have to be more cautious and restring it you know, a little bit quicker than most. And if you have a backup racket, you can take it all the way to the end and make sure it pops before you switch to your other racket. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're like most where you have still intact strings in your racket, but you're unsure if it's worthwhile to cut them out and restring. And what you need to do is you need to think back to the beginning part of the video and think about if the power is gone, if the control is gone, the spin, the feel, the response. If you see the ball sailing when you're hitting it, then you know it's time for a restring. If you're not sensing that sweet spot, the ball pocketing has changed, or any of these kind of indicators, then you know it's time to restring. If you're still unsure or you don't have high sensitivity and you can't feel the big difference, then I would recommend asking your coach, doubles partner, opponent, whoever. See if they're noticing anything in your play. If a ball is coming with less pop or more pop. If rallies are shortened because the ball is sailing on you. Let them give you that feedback so that you know it's time for a restring. If you don't have that luxury, what you can do is you can check your tennis bag for a backup racket. It's an easy way to play one racket once compared to another racket, hopefully freshly strung, not used as much, and use it as a point of reference. If you see a huge difference between the rackets, you know it's time to restring. If both rackets are kind of playing the same and one is freshly strung, you know that the other one hasn't really degraded much and is really holding its form. A final thing that you can do is you can go to your local tennis shop and if they're anything like us and they have a big selection of demo rackets, freshly strung, you can compare your racket to one of the rackets that they have on the shelf. You can see that if a newer racket, freshly strung, plays like yours with that same situation as before, if it's really close, you're doing good, the racket's just fine. If you notice a big difference, it's probably time to invest in that restring. And if you don't have a big sensitivity to how the racket's playing and all these changes, the biggest thing for you to do is to just consider it like a financial question. Is the 20, 30, 40 dollars, whatever your local shop charges, whatever string you're picking, is it worthwhile for you to have that fun on court, that competitive edge, and have your equipment playing the best? I'm sure when you've asked the question before of when it's time to restring, you get that textbook answer of if you play three times a week, make sure you restring three times a year. And although I do agree with the validity of it, I don't think it fully accurately describes when you should and should not restring. And as you've learned in this video, the two major reasons are going to be A, breakage, and how much time and durability you have on the racket before you need to restring, and B, that performance, feel, response that you get from the racket. And if that starts to deteriorate, 
how you want to revive your equipment and get it playing its best. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about stringing and other tips, we have some videos here for you. And if you want to learn more about product reviews and other equipment in the tennis industry, be sure to click there. We have new videos coming for you every week, so if you want to subscribe, you can be the first to find out. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video.